Hello, everybody, and welcome to the education session. Uh, the first speaker is uh, Marcus, and uh, he's going to speak about uh, community-based learning and knowledge and sharing. Thank you. Well, my name is Marcus Kain. We hope you had a good lunch. Um, I will give another presentation on uh, learning R for you, but I will try to emphasize a bit more sort of the teaching side of the learning and within an organization. Uh, there's two background organizations that I have listed here. One is R Open Gov, which is a community project for open government data. And the other one is the social insurance institution uh, of Finland, Gela, that pays for my salary. Um, so I wanted to begin with listing a couple of differences between my approach and the many excellent presentations we have had so far on learning and teaching R. So, like I said, <clears throat> uh, in this, uh, that I will discuss teaching sort of professionals with uh, strong knowledge in statistics and in data analysis, but who are new to R and, and new to modern computation. The code base that I will show you uh, is far from a platform. It's just a, a very low-level tool for creating uh, customized assignments and for summarizing the assignments locally. And this is to supplement the sort of the learning platforms, the R packages, the textbooks, the webinars, the question and answer sites, the software carpentry, you name it, with sort of tailored exercises to, for your domain, either your field of science or your organization, um, your IT infrastructure and uh, your human language. And primarily this is, and has been a tool just to make my life easier, but um, let's see if that would also be a benefit of of, of, of yours. So our OpenGov is a, is a community. Leo Lahti will uh, give a lightning talk today at 5.50, so um, you should have then tap if you want to know a bit more. Uh, my organization is, uh, is, like I said, the Social Insurance Institution of Finland, sort of a backbone of a Finnish welfare state, distributes uh, social benefits worth of roughly 15 billion euros every year for almost all Finns. We sort of, as a return, we collect data from Finns from the day they were born, or actually a few months before, until they have uh, no use for the pension anymore. Uh, Kela was the first SAS customer in Finland in 1984, and has been a faithful one ever since. But now, uh, over the let's say really recently, we have gone through a major data warehousing uh, reform and the solution that SAS could provide wasn't um, attractive enough, so uh, Gela started looking for new solutions. Um, R is one of them. I joined um, Gela a year ago, and kind of as a coincidence, uh, the R was taking off and now uh, there's a plenty of work to integrate R in research, but not only in research, but also in the IT and in sort of in general statistics production. You may know Gela, I mean, Finns know Gela very well, but the international audience maybe knows the basic income experiment in Finland, so, so Gela is the one who um, uh, designed that and implemented it. And uh, if there's one thing that is harder than learning R, it is uh, designing or especially implementing a, a basic income experiment. So. Uh, stay out of that. Um, okay, so what we did, we did uh, a 12-week course for the researchers. Like I said, they were experienced with a background in economy, sociology, biomedicine, statistics, and we aimed to provide sort of a working knowledge of R at the end of the course. They could, at some level at least, they could be able to integrate R into their daily work. Um, so we had some introductory uh, classroom lectures, but mostly we had online lectures uh, put together from, from webinars, from textbook chapters, from some um, interactive uh, uh, 
sites and you know, you know all these resources. And then they were supplemented with uh, tailored homework assignments, followed by a sort of a live classroom feedback sessions. Uh, so sort of as a result of this course, as a result of a few other courses I've run at the university, I did a bit also at my previous um, work at the uh, Food and Agriculture Organization, the UN. Um, I thought that, um, and, and looking forward, that, that there will be a more and more demand of kind of an ad hoc internal uh, R sessions. So I came up with this uh, package, EDU, really recently. And what it does, like I said, you can create assignments, you can uh, assess the assignment, and maybe the most importantly, you can manipulate the existing assignments or the exercises, and you can add new exercises. And I will just uh, make a, a, a quick demonstration here, uh, assuming that uh, you have a R course uh, coming, and you need to create an assignment for your students. And in R Studio, you have the package installed, you open a new R script, and you open the, um, the add-on. And we think that, okay, so this, is, this will be uh, week one, and we will be studying um, data importing. So you may be surprised that, okay, where the data comes from and, and what is this. I will just briefly show that in the end. So I will just pick the first, first three assignments here. I will do that in English. They're also in, in, in Finnish here but also in, um, in English, and that's it. So now it, it populates the, the empty R script with the assignments in this sort of a Roger Gen uh, notation. Uh, and you have, in the end, you have also the correct answers here for your own sort of reference. But before you distribute this to the students, you take that off, you save the, um, save the assignment here, and you either email or somehow, somehow give it to your students. Then uh, one week later, your students have um, completed their assignments and they are here in this, this folder with, with three different students having uh, answered in these um, exercises. And so they have a, one has replaced the default answer with don't know, Z tried, his best, but couldn't find the right data frame, and the, um, and the uh, X used plot cars for all the exercises. Okay, so then you want to um, sort of, what you need as a teacher, that you want them just to be in a single script that you can then uh, compile, and you can have the students' answers and the right answers, and then you can give the feedback for your students. So then you can, um, you can go to, um, Mm. All the steps are uh, explained here. So you go to uh, assessing assignments here. There's only a one function actually in the package right now called the process assignments. So you have all the uh, assignments in a single folder. And, and what you do, you... Uh, you for the func function, you give the path to the folder where the assignments are. You give the path where you want to, to summarize the summary report to go, and then you give the name for the, for the summary report. And when you run it, in, in this case, you can then find it from the, um, from the summaries folder. And here, let's see, <clears throat> we then have the the script with, with all the answers and then the correct answers in the end. And if you just compile the report, you get the HTML in this case. It's very simple, but now you have the question here and you have the, the right answers below. So, so that's kind of how you would run the course, but of course you would need to this is not for kind of running generic exercises, but mainly that you need to do something for your people and in your language and, and probably that, that work only internally. 
So the data structure, so we actually have like, we have two, two R scripts. We have one for the add-in, and then we have another one for assessing the assignment. And then we have a, if you go to, this is the package folder, there's a, there's a data folder, and then there are several YAML files. And then if we look at the, uh, one of these files, for instance, the basic, so we can see the data structure we have right now. So it has a, it has an ID. This has to be unique, unique. Then there's a domain. This is all for the, for the add-in, the, the the user interface. Then you can grade somehow if you if you like. Then the, then, you have the question in different human languages here in Finnish and in English, and then you have the the answer here below. If you would like to have a make a new assignment, you would just, uh, let's say, save um, this, not here, but to the data folder. Let's say um, extra dot, dot yaml, and you would go to the, to, um, here to the website. I, I will, there, there was just a couple of, um, let's see, I will take one a bit more complex yaml block here that also has uh, some, some extras like this. And then we would take another one with a few more languages uh, like this. Let's see. OK, so now we have a new, um, new set of exercises. And out of this, we can then, once we build the package, we could open up a new R script and create an assignment with um, extra domain. And then we would have this, um, there was something, something wrong with, the, uh, with how I designed the, the YAML. But I don't have time to go through this. It worked 15 minutes ago. Um, so anyway, this is how it works. And uh, to go back to the slides, So to summarize, again, I mean, with this, with this edu package, you can create these assignments based on the, on the, on the questionnaires that are currently there. You can um, assess the assignments once students have completed them and you have somehow collected them. And then you can uh, add new exercises. Then, of course, this is a very low level, and I, I've, so far I've kept it very, very basic. But you can then... then uh, Built, you know, dashboards and rankings and whatever on top of the uh, top of the um, exercises assignments. If you have a kind of a internal uh, facilities for 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 students to submit their assignments and you know, however you you find useful. Okay, so the lessons learned um, from here is that. I mean, this is a bit more general, not about this code base, but for teaching or, or for, for professionals, from my point of view. That um, is a quite a big step to jump from, from Stata or SAS or from SPSS, especially into, uh, into scripting. So that kind of a, a step should be maybe a bit better facilitated, at least in the way I've studied. And, and then just the basics of R, because people have a bit of a background, so, so they could uh, actually benefit from, from um, explaining the basics, maybe more than students. And uh, more easier, better tailored exercises, solving well-known problems using well-known data sets. So this is the one thing that always comes up, that OK, yeah, storms, MPG, empty cars, no, you know, we want to do something with unemployment benefits or with, uh, with the um, child allowances. And uh, less ideological um, talk. That was the one thing that if R is good enough, then, you know, it's good enough. That's all they want to know. Uh, from my point of view, it's, I would need to, I, I thought I, I always know my students, but I would need to know them, like, really, really well in order to, to uh, construct these um, exercises. 
the language, the human language is important. Many of the, especially when talking about computation, many of the terms are unclear for people even in their own language, not to mention in English. So if you can provide the assignments in their own language, I think that is a benefit. They have a very little time, very critical. Uh, they need to unlearn where the bad habits they have been taught in their uh, own disciplines. But on the other hand, they are kind of, if you are within the organization, there are sort of direct benefits for you if you are able to successfully conduct the, um, the course so you can you know, start scaling up things pretty quick. Um, but then on, on the other hand, you have to kind of accept that there are professionals with, with different, uh, different uh, interests, and for many it may be uh, enough if they just kind of learn the, uh, the basics, what the programming is, and what you can, what you can achieve with, with programming, with R, with, with automation, and they don't really need to um, learn to code independently. And uh, as for the package, uh, yeah, maybe a package developers, one thing would be also to, uh, to think about is to, to maybe provide, in addition to vignettes and, uh, and the good tutorials, some, some exercises in some kind of a data format that could be then used in this kind of courses. And any kind of contributions are, are more than welcome. Thank you.